Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. This video is all about the keys to having a successful sweet potato harvest. It's middle of November. These are what grew over this season. And I just wanted to kind of, kind of build this video backwards. So that's the harvest. Really nice sized sweet potatoes. And this video will teach you how to really set up the soil so you get a great sweet potato harvest. So I'm gonna clear this off. And we're gonna start the video as if we are just setting this up the first time. So I'm gonna take out some of the soil. But key number one is your sweet potatoes really like loose soil. This is maybe, I don't know, 18 inches high. If you're doing this in the ground, you wanna make about 12 inch mounds, really loosen the soil, you would plan into that. But this is gonna be for setting up containers. So number one, loose soil. Number two, the second key, is you want to have a lower nitrogen number. So when you look on uh, fertilizers, you see N, P, and K. Nitrogen is the first number. So you want it to look something like maybe a two or three nitrogen, you know, then a six phosphorus, six potassium. You know, look like a two, six, six, or a three, six, six, or maybe, you know, a four, seven, eight. It gets a little bit confusing, but the point is, is you don't want to over nitrogen your soil for your sweet potatoes or you'll get more leaf growth. You want the tubers um, to form. These are the same sweet potatoes. They're finishing curing. And what that means is when you harvest a sweet potato, it's not gonna be sweet. It's filled with starches, kind of bland, still has nutrition in there, but you want these to cure for at least four weeks, a little bit longer. And what that means is that the starches that are in your sweet potato are gonna convert over to sugars and they're gonna have that you know, delicious taste that we're all familiar with and that's what we're looking for. So these were pulled late at 150 days, again, 90 to 120 days, you can pull out your sweet potatoes. Typically, I let them sit on the surface of the ground seven to 10 days, let the skins toughen up, let the curing process start, but we were getting frost. So you don't want these to be sitting in frost. So you might have to move them into a garage or something like that. The technical way, which I think is crazy, is these should be stored at 80 degrees with 90% humidity for the appropriate curing process. I don't have that. I don't know who has that. So don't overstress about that. Bottom line, about seven days or so sitting out in a warmer weather, the sun, no frost. Let them dry, let them start curing. And then for about four weeks, put them into a dry place in your basement, in your house, in the garage, and just let them do their thing. If you're able to create an 80 degree temperature with 90% humidity, more power to you, I can't do that. But you wanna get about four weeks of them just set, sitting before you use them, and they'll be absolutely delicious. If you want to subscribe and follow me, I'll talk more about fertilizer, how you take care of these over the season next year. But to start, low nitrogen, I guess is the easiest way to say, um, to say it. And then we're going to add in, in this video, some bone meal to increase the uh, phosphorus. And we're going to add in some wood ash to increase the potassium. So we're going to, you know, use organic fertilizers to bring those numbers up. Potassium. Phosphorus is something that your root crops really enjoy. Next key is watering. It's really hard to say how much water, but what I can let you know is you don't want this to dry out. If the plant dries out through the soil, stresses out the plant, you're not going to get really good sweet potato development. So when you start reading, it'll say like, you know, one inch of water every week or whatever. That's kind of confusing. You want to soak this through, just soak the top down. Imagine the water kind of, you know, working its way down. And in spring, maybe once a week, when it starts really heating up, twice a week, you could do it more if you want to. The bottom of this is open. So as long as your water can drain out, you can't really overdo it. Sweet potatoes love the warmth. So getting them into the soil before it's really 60 degrees Fahrenheit, they're not going to do much. So you really want to wait till you plant your sweet potatoes to the soils up to about 60 degrees. And that would be later spring, earlier summer in a lot of places. And generally speaking, these sweet potatoes were actually almost 150 days worth of growth in here. Sweet potatoes are going to be harvested 90 to 120 days after you put the slips in and they get established. Another tip is these vines. So I set up an elaborate system here so that the vines can grow upwards and they don't trail everywhere, even though they did get a, away from me a little bit this year. You can clip the vines back to three feet or four feet 
so that they're concentrating more on the tuber growth rather than leaf growth. You don't have to do that. I'm going to experiment with that. But I grew the leaves upwards, didn't prune them back this year. This is the harvest that I got. And you know, these are good sizes. I think I could get larger sweet potatoes. I cut open a larger one. It was not fibrous. So larger sweet potatoes doesn't mean that the quality is poorer. And then finally spacing. So these were spaced pretty closely together. Sweet potatoes slip, you grow the greenery, you root it out, you put it in. You can put them anywhere from really 10 to 12 inches apart. In the ground, if you were doing rows, you would do a row of the slips 10 to 12 inches apart, leave two or three feet in between so that you can walk and the, vine, and the vines have space to sprawl. For these, I'm growing the vines upward. So I really did you know, a plan about every 10 to 12 inches, maybe a little bit closer, all the way around. So the spacing in between each plant vertically, horizontally, was just, let's, let's say, 10 to 12 inches. What I found from this year of growing is really loosening the soil is important. The upper part, the upper half of this was loose. The potatoes did pretty good. As they got down further to where my soil's more clay, and I put in lesser quality soil in the bottom of these containers, they got a little bit bent and stuff like that, but generally speaking, they look okay. Those are the keys to growing large sweet potatoes and having a great harvest. You have to follow that. Um, fertilizing over the season, less is better. Don't put in nitrogen, really just, you know, a couple feedings, maybe two, maybe three over the season. is plenty for your sweet potatoes, especially if you set up the soil this way. So let me clear this out. I'm going to take out half the soil. We're going to talk about if this was the first time we were planting sweet potatoes, how I would recommend setting it up. And then when I fill the bed, we'll talk about, you know, your second year, your third year, because you don't have to keep emptying this out every year, going down to the bottom, loosening it up. You need to do that for the first year. Second year would be a little bit different. So when I first start my garden, it's usually a heavier clay soil like that. Your sweet potatoes are going to be deformed, won't grow as well in there. So you really want to loosen it up. And that's really adding in peat moss or cocoa core, um, leaf mold, leaf compost, compost. And you want it to look something like this, where if you squeeze it, it stays together a little bit, but breaks apart really easily. I mean, this is nice stuff for potatoes too but for sweet potato. When you get to my clay, if I squeeze it, it stays really packed. So what I wanted to do was make sure I loosen up what's down here. And I'll throw in some compost, just mix it in with the shovel. The whole key is to have 12 inches from where you put in the slip to a growing depth, minimum. If you go to 18 inches, that will be great, but that is hard for some people. So I'm just gonna throw in a couple shovelfuls of compost. I'm not gonna show you how I do that. Some of my leaf uh, grow that I made, with molded leaves that are about a year old. Mix it into there, that will loosen it up. What I want to sh talk about is the fertilizer. So let me do that and then I'll talk about the fertilizer. Let's work our way in from here with the fertilizer. Now I understand we all have different um, access to resources, different budgets. So if you want to grow sweet potatoes, you don't have to follow this perfectly. Maybe all you can afford is some organic fertilizer. This is a basic 253. You just want to have N, P, and K represented, and this nitrogen is lower than the, the uh, phosphorus and the potassium. This would be perfectly fine to use. I like to blend my own. I get fertilizers that are on sale at the end of the season here in Maryland Zone 7. Make my own blend. This is for uh, root crops, and it's really somewhere around like a 4 nitrogen and then double digit phosphorus and a little bit lower potassium. So let's just pretend this is a basic organic fertilizer. Again, you can grow sweet potatoes and most of your garden crops just using basic compost, which is well below a 111 NP and K and plants have been doing well with that for hundreds of years. So this is wood ash. Wood ash is when you burn your firewood, you end up with the ash. This is higher in potassium. I use this throughout my garden. If you use this in a crazy amount, it can uh, raise the pH level of your soil, make it more alkaline, but we're not going to use that much. Not going to use that much. Then you get to fertilizers that will increase the phosphorus and the potassium. The first one is bone meal. This is a 2-14-0 NP and K. 2% nitrogen, 14% phosphorus, 0 um, potassium. 
Now, this is steamed crushed cattle bone. Some people that are vegan don't want to use animal product. This is considered organic. It will up the phosphorus. You come over to triple uh, super phosphate. That's my dogs in the background. And that's a 0.450 NP and K. Triple super phosphate really increases the phosphorus. Your root crops enjoy that. This is made from rock phosphate usually combined with phosphoric acid it reacts you get triple superphosphate believe it or not this is considered organic by some depending on where the rock phosphate comes from how the uh, acids are derived that's up to you triple superphosphate will work you just need a little bit because it's really concentrated um, high in the 45 number for phosphorus in there. Then you have potash. This is usually called murate of potash. This is typically um, potassium chloride. So this will increase the potassium. Um, the hard wood ash I use to increase my um, potassium. But you could use this and this is a 0060 fertilizer. No nitrogen, no phosphorus, 60% potassium. You would just want to use a little bit of this. I'll show you how I use this at the end if I decide to use it. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Both of these could be considered organic, but you'll have to research, you know, what that means. Now, I will also link in the video how I blend my own fertilizers together, together to get the right numbers. Typically, I just blend fertilizers, adjust the numbers, and then I add in bone meal to raise the um, phosphorus. I'm trying to keep the word phosphorus and potassium straight so you get the idea and remember this is what I do when I first set up the bed so once you do this you set it up we're only going to be fertilizing the top and I'll show you how to do that after this so I fill it halfway put in my compost if I have it or if you have it make it nice and loose and then in a space this wide and this is probably three feet maybe by four feet something like that I really load in the organic granular. This has the N, P, and K in here. One handful, two handfuls, three handfuls, four. I mean, it's really loaded in there. And then I would mix this down a good six inches, eight inches. That would set it up. And I would do that all the way across the bed. If I'm growing something that is a root crop or is going to like more phosphorus, more potassium. I typically use the bone meal. I don't put as much in. This was the 14% uh, phosphorus and I would put in something this size. A handful here, a handful there, and then let me reach over. For the potassium, I use my wood ash and I would just put in a handful. Now, you don't have to set it up this way to grow sweet potatoes. Just a basic organic granular will work fine. You will definitely get sweet potatoes. By doing these amendments or tricks to raise the phosphorus, the potassium, you can get greater production, you know, bigger sweet potatoes. But you certainly can just use compost and granular fertilizer. So this would get mixed in six, eight, ten inches. And then let's go to the top as if we were setting it up for the first time but then also what I do really every fall for my sweet potato and actually my potato beds. This is all set up. I'll show you how to do that through the end of the video but just to make it a complete video we are talking about lower nitrogen setting the soil up but when I actually put in the sweet potato slips in the spring um, I will water them in with a water soluble fertilizer fish emulsion which is usually about a five nitrogen one phosphorus um, one potassium, higher nitrogen. That water soluble feeding will help establish the sweet potato slips. They'll get growing. I may do that one more time, maybe two more times, depending on how the greenery is going, but pretty much just let it go after that. The soil is set up from what I showed you today. The basic nitrogen water soluble fertilizer on the transplants will get them established, and then you just let the sweet potatoes go. If I was filling this raised bed for the first time, and I have a lot of videos on it, the upper 10 inches, eight inches or so gets the better quality stuff, nice and loose like I showed you. 
I will put some compost down here in uh, December on the top maybe an inch or so. Certainly always use compost if you have it. But just setting it up with the granulars. So first year I would set it up the same way. Next year I would set it up the same way and I would just keep putting in compost in addition to all this. Compost is really king or queen. So on the top, as I was saying, three or four handfuls of the organic granular across here. And let's just pretend, just to save some time, that I'm doing the same exact thing over there. One handful of the wood ash to bring up the potassium. Bone meal maybe two handfuls and you can see you don't have to be perfect with this when you're putting down the percentages sometimes the fertilizers will be like three four six or two fourteen zero that's the percentage in the bags once you mix this through and into depth of your soil it's not really like fourteen percent bone meal in here you're just mixing it through again I want to stress that compost is well below a one 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 NP and K but it keeps a continuous supply of nutrients to your plants. So you're supplementing your soil with these products. Now, here's the potash. It's a cool color because it's a mineral. And I would just use maybe this much on one half. You don't need a lot. And then with the triple superphosphate, maybe same thing. Just, you know, FYI, if you were putting this in your garden to raise the phosphorus or potassium, you're using like a pound per hundred square feet, which is not really a lot. So this stuff is pretty potent. You don't want to put it in as heavily as your bone meal, as your wood ash, as your organic granular. Use this if you want. Don't use it if you don't want to. It's not going to harm your plants using it like this. So I would mix this in good six inches, eight inches down. You don't need to water it in in the winter. It'll rain. Soil biology will break this down. Some of this is already water soluble. You're going to have a great planting area for your sweet potatoes um, come spring. And that's what I'm really looking for. On top of this, I'm actually going to cut the grass today, chop up a bunch of leaves, put some leaves down on here, put some compost on here, and this bed will be put to rest. Thanks for watching. Hope it gives you some confidence on how to use different fertilizers to build up your soil for growing sweet potatoes, but pay attention to those five tips. They really make a difference. And when in doubt, compost works, and just a basic organic, organic granular will allow you to grow, you know, Great sweet potatoes, they'll be absolutely delicious. And if you want to start tweaking the pH, I'm sorry, the phosphorus and the potassium with different fertilizers, go ahead. It's a lot of fun, but just don't overdo it. Thanks for watching.